That's the first week of the last session, Carol, from NMicro, very active in various open source EDA projects that I'm aware of. And you will speak about Chips Alliance today. Yep. Uh, give an update, one of the few alliances in the space. Thanks a lot. Thanks. Um, I suppose I should start this one. Oh, yeah. Please start the timer. OK. Um, thanks for having me here today. Uh, as Stefan said, uh, my name is Karol Gawa, and uh, I'm from Micro. but today I'm also representing Chips Alliance, and I will be uh, talking about the tools we develop uh, at Chips Alliance and, and uh, how you can use it, how you can contribute to them, and why are they cool. Uh, so let's start maybe from the beginning. What is Chips Alliance? Maybe not everyone here is aware of it and what this organization is. So basically, this is an organization uh, where a lot of companies uh, jointly work on uh, developing various pieces that are needed to, uh, to work on open source, with open source uh, on uh, digital designs, on ASICs, FPGAs. Uh, that includes uh, you know, standards, uh, cores, CPUs, I.O., uh, IP cores, uh, tools, and all that, all those things that, that uh, are there. Uh, Chips Alliance is uh, part of Linux Foundation. It uh, is governed by Linux Foundation. So, of course, it applies uh, a bunch of practices from Linux Foundation and, and governing uh, rules from there. Uh, we default to Apache uh, licensing, Apache or uh, open Web Foundation uh, licenses, so permissive uh, licenses, you know, everything open source and permissive licenses, li permissively licensed. So whatever we do, you can just grab and, and use. Uh, and of course, we're happy if you contribute back. Uh, so basically, the idea there is to uh, get a number of companies to work together towards having a better uh, open source ecosystem around, uh, around open source uh, digital design. So there is a lot of companies in Chips Alliance, within Chips Alliance. Uh, those are just some of them. It's not uh, the whole, uh, uh, the whole uh, member count. If you want to see all of them, you can go to chipsalliance.org and see uh, member section. I just listed a few of them that I was sure that, that you would recognize. You know, uh, those are known from, from uh, the digital world. Uh, we have a few work groups, and we'd like to introduce them, and then I switch to, uh, to the main topic of this presentation. So we have Chizo work group uh, that basically focuses on uh, developing and maintaining Chizo hardware description language. This is Scala-based uh, hardware description language, uh, widely used right now uh, to develop chips to develop FPGA designs and, and stuff like that. Rocket is a uh, group that maintains and develops Rocket Chip Generator. A Rocket Chip Generator is a Chizo written framework for uh, designing, for generating uh, CPUs and SOCs. Uh, and it is widely used uh, to, to build chips, and, and you, know, you can even buy them right now. Uh, Calyptra is a group uh, working on open source root of trust uh, uh, design and ASIC, basically. Analog work group works on uh, analog parts of the, of the designs, uh, so basically cores, but also tools, but also verification, anything that touches the analog part of the, uh, of the chip design. F4PGA group works on uh, FPG, open source FPGA toolings. Uh, tool chains and tools work group is the tool is the group that uh, I chair, and we work on all the tooling around that is not covered by any other groups. So basically, a bunch of tools uh, for verification, bunch of tools for work with the code, and, and so on, so on. Uh, so back in the days when we started uh, the whole idea, uh, we found a gap, like the biggest gap in the uh, in the open source tooling is lack of support for system Verilog. And uh, so we thought that, okay, this is the gap we can, uh, we can fill, we can work on that, but first of all, we need to understand what is missing and where we are. Uh, so to do that, to understand it, uh, we built a framework called uh, SVTest. This is actually a test suite, open source test suite, uh, that runs a number of compliance, system Verilog compliance tests uh, through 
number of open source tools. Uh, this is all done in public. The whole dashboard, the results are there. You can just follow this link and see the results. Um, so we did it mostly to understand uh, what is the problem, where we at, and to track the progress. Uh, but it started uh, the framework, the, the, uh, the test suite uh, was adopted as a pretty nice, pretty neat uh, test suite for various tools and uh, authors of those tools, and they started contributing back, uh, making it better and better. Uh, so it's pretty good in a, in a pretty good shape right now and widely used. Uh, so if you want to see how tools perform or maybe contribute something uh, new, you can go there and then see it there. So to work with system verlog, we of course need some kind of a parser, and Shulok is that kind of a tool. Shulok is a, a system verlog, open source system verlog uh, parser and elaborator where you can just fit it with system verlog uh, design, and it will give you uh, like parsed AST. But it can also give you something called uh, UHDM uh, model. UHDM is a universal hardware data model, so basically. Uh, a format where you can use, uh, which you can use to traverse through uh, the elaborate, elaborated design, through the hierarchy of the design, just see what is there, uh, what blocks are there, what signals are there, and all that stuff. Uh, somehow similar to VPI, but not for s uh, simulation only, but more for uh, checking whatever the design is. Uh, Synlink is a um, open source Yosis plugin that actually uses uh, Shulok and UHDM uh, to enable uh, fully open source system verlog synthesis. So basically you can, uh, using Synlink, you can uh, synthesize system verlog designs. So with those tools, you can build something. But to build something, you first have to write the code. And, you know, uh, to write a code, you just need a text editor, and that's okay. But having uh, something that would help you with, with uh, uh, developing the code is pretty useful and pretty neat. So for that, we have Variable, and Variable is a set of tools uh, originally developed by Google, donated to Chips Alliance, and basically they are designed, they, they are meant to help ease the life of uh, system verlog uh, designers. So they provide uh, functionalities like linter, like formato, uh, lexical yeah. div, indexer, uh, also language server, and so on, so on. Uh, this is really useful if you work with um, a bigger, especially open source project, uh, where many people contribute to a single project, many people develop the code, and in the end you have to take care of the quality of the code. So to do that, you want to have certain rules, like rules like uh, linting rules, like formatting rules. So in the end, you know everything is somehow uh, compatible, and, and uh, you can check it. Um, to and for that, of course, you use linters. For that, you use uh, formatters. Uh, to uh, make it easier to use it with uh, open source uh, projects where many people from different parts of the world collaborate together. We created a GitHub action combining variable, I'm mean using variable. So if you would like to use those tools uh, in your project, in your GitHub project, you can simply include this action in your CI specification and it will run uh, the, the, the linting and formatting rules on your code base. So we can, for example, uh, define to run it on every single pull request, on every single commit or, or whatsoever. Of course, you can provide your own rules and your own sets. Uh, it will, of course, check the new code. Uh, and it can even no, uh, give you comments automatically in your pull requests, comments similar to, to those here, uh, just pointing problems, like here you forgot you know, to, to indent the code, here you forgot to uh, add the label, and stuff like that. If there is a formatting error, the formatter can even propose a solution that you can just accept, like... Yeah, uh, um, he's pretty active. I like hear voices. Okay, uh, like <laughs> uh, uh, the other thing, uh, the other tool from a variables oh, yeah, set of tools, I think that's Stefan. Um, do you remember there was a 
a movie with Leslie Nielsen. He had a microphone and he went to the toilet. Fortunately, we're not there. Um, okay, so another tool from this set of tools is uh, Language Server. And this is actually a pretty nice uh, tool if you work with System Verilog. Uh, because as I said, you can, to, to write the code, you can just use a uh, text editor, that's all. But if you have a text editor that is uh, a bit smarter and can use a Language Server, you can actually run langu variable language server underneath in the background. It can scan the code and can give you features like auto-completion, like you know, uh, uh, auto-listing uh, members of uh, some packed structs or structs in general, or like uh, whatever is in the module or, or things like that. Um, we have, uh, if you go to uh, documentation, variables documentation, there is a bunch of uh, text editors and uh, uh, there's a bunch of editors listed there and some short uh, snippets of codes of code how to use a variable with that. If you happen to be using um, Visual Studio Code, it's even simpler. You can just go to market, uh, to Microsoft Marketplace and just install the plugin. It will fetch uh, the binary underneath and you can just use it and it's, it's pretty, uh, pretty useful. Um, so, uh, we have tools for synthesis, we have tools for working with the code, uh, it would be good to have a tools for uh, verifying the code, and one of those from this area is uh, a framework called, uh, called uh, RISC-5DV. Uh, again, this is a framework that was originally developed by Google and then donated to Chips Alliance. Uh, so, this framework is intended to be used with RISC-V uh, CPU cores, uh, in a way that you can uh, stress test your core against a randomly generated stream of instructions. Of course, randomly, but still legal, uh, stream of instructions, and compare the execution against a golden model and see if your CPU is actually performing and it's doing exactly what it's supposed to do. Um, this is highly configurable, so you can choose the extensions, you can choose uh, features that you, you want to use, uh, and simply run it. It's all open source, it's all uh, in Chips Alliance, so if you ha happen to be working with uh, RISC-V CPU cores, you can use RISC-V-DV uh, to stress test it to, to, uh, for, uh, for the same verification. Um, the verification uh, process, synthesis process in, in general, working with uh, especially bigger design uh, designs, uh, often requires quite or I would say non-trivial uh, amount of computational power. Yeah? So you need to have a bulky machine, bulky machine in most cases, with a lot of RAM uh, and pretty powerful CPU. Um, plus, it often takes time to actually finish the build or the simulation or whatever you're doing. Um, so if, but if you're working on uh, a bigger project uh, and the project is open source, the project is on GitHub, you typically default to GitHub Actions for CI, uh, but the machines that you're getting for free in GitHub uh, are, not that, uh, uh, are not that powerful. Of course, you can buy higher tier, but still you don't have really much control about, uh, of those machines. To address that, we created a custom GitHub runner software uh, that you can deploy uh, on-premise, right now it targets mostly uh, GCP, so Google Cloud uh, Platform. Um, and you can basically delegate the, the uh, CI jobs to, to be run on them. The fact that you can delegate something to a bigger machine is not that spectacular, uh, but there is actually a cool thing there that you can have uh, uh, jobs that are secret. Jobs that will just tell you if they pass or not, uh, and you can see the logs only if you are authorized to do so. Uh, so this allows you to run some tools that are not open source, because we know that open source tooling is not there yet with everything, so we cannot use open source tooling for every single task in, in digital design. Uh, with that, you can actually still have a, a public project that everyone can contribute and use some proprietary tools to actually run tests and at least tell somebody if it works or not um, without you know, exposing secret data. Um, there is one more 
big effort that is happening right now. Uh, I don't want to spoil it. I kind of spoil it with the title of this, uh, uh, of this, of this slide. Uh, but I don't want to uh, go deeper into that because uh, tomorrow at 2 p.m. here, um, a colleague of mine, Chris, who is sitting there, will have a presentation uh, about... Whoa. I suppose I can have a few seconds uh, more. Uh, um, about uh, the status of, of uh, UVM uh, support in very later. Um, if you want to know more, uh, there will be... Uh, collocated with uh, the next Risk Five Summit in Sunnyvale, in, in California this November, there will be a Chips Alliance for uh, technology update. Uh, so if you happen to be there, uh, you can join this uh, this event and learn more about what we do in Chips Alliance, what what happens there, and uh, so on and so on. Uh, so that's all. Thank you. Thank you. I have a very shallow question. Um, who does your graphics? I quite like them. Oh, uh, I will tell them. I mean, uh, it's, uh, we have a team of graphic cool. people. And they, they uh, I mean, I, I write, uh, I draw something and then they make it nice. Cool. <laughs> uh, I have like a typical, you know, uh, computer science guy uh, taste. Uh, so basically I draw ugly pictures. Yeah, me too. Yeah. 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 <laughs> cool, they're very nice uh, questions, real questions. Ah, Mark. Well, you should wait for the microphone. Sorry. Um, so I think it was really interesting you discussed um, UHDM. I hadn't heard of that before. It sounds like an intermediate representation mm -hmm. between kind of uh, parser tools and then tools that do something with a, a elaborated database. But there was a previous Chips Alliance project, which was Fertile, right, which was also an intermediate representation of RTL languages. Uh, I well, are they different projects? Are they? Can you repeat the name of the Fertile F I R R T L? That was a, a previous oh, Verilog intermediate representation yes, uh, project. That this Lines. is something different. I mean, Fertile is used. Uh, it's uh, it used to be used uh, with Chisel to basically uh, as a I would say uh, building the uh, the design uh, intermediate representation. So basically, uh, Chisel was originally. Uh, building first, compiling first to Firtu, and then generating Verilog from it. Uh, they moved right now, I mean, they are moving right now with the newest release, uh, releases to circuits, uh, to LLVM, uh, intermediate representation, uh, with that. Uh, Sorry, you're saying that the Chisel compiler is moving to UHDM? No, Chisel is moving to circuit, to LLVM, intermediate okay, rep okay. representation for, for digital designs. Uh, so starting from Chisel 5, I think, uh, there is 3, which is the old one, still with, uh, with Firtu. Uh, I don't think there is four. Maybe there is a gap just to, for future releases with, with uh, Firtu. And uh, five and six, GZO five and six, uh, is using uh, circuit. Uh, I think five was exper more experimental. Six is kind of stable, so probably you can, you can switch to that if you want to use circuit. Uh, UHDM is slightly different. UHDM. Um, is uh, basically storing the information like a hierarchy information of elaborated design. Uh, so it's. Uh, is that that different? Aren't they both meant to be? I mean, probably you a can parse use them. Representation of a hardware implementation, isn't that? Uh, yeah, you can use in, in that sense. If you just want to represent the hardware, then, then you can use them. Uh, you can use both. Uh, I think the industry desperately needs something like this, right? Because you have this huge problem that. Everybody has to go and implement a Verilog parser all the time mm -hmm. because yeah. um, there's no standard representation that you get out of that. That's true. And uh, but UHDM goes a bit uh, further, one one step further. It's uh, it's something that you can. It's it's also a way of uh, like traversing through this project. Yeah. Sure. As I said, it's something like uh, I would say I would compare it to VPI. Yeah. If you if you use this Verilog procedural interface. Sure. And, and for a while ago, Springsoft had one when the Verdi. Like a few people have published ones of these, but the problem is. Everybody ends up making their own one, and it gets used by a few couples of tools. And I think that maybe the Chips Alliance is in a good position to actually write a standard yeah, that's true. to yeah. say, like, this is, you know, we'll add features, take feature requests, you know, we encourage you to adopt this. Yeah. But I think it's kind of strange is that they already had two. <laughs> um, those are, as I said, you're using different, different uh, scenarios. Uh, and as I said, the, uh, the one, Fear2, is actually 
to be honest, I'm not sure if, if it's going to be uh, developed further. If it's not deprecated. It's be, or being deprecated right now uh, as they switch to circuit. And, and circuit is basically this LLVM internal representation. Yeah? So, so that's going to be used there for compiling stuff and, and uh, building stuff. Uh, UHDM and, and uh, Sherlock is pretty complete. I mean, if, if you go to system Verilog test suite, uh, it's mostly green in this uh, column. So uh, uh, it's pretty useful. Uh, I encourage you to use it. Uh, uh, if you find it useful, propagate it, and then maybe we'll just be standard there. <laughs> We should probably move on to the next speaker. So let's thank the current speaker. Cheers. Thank you.